Hello, anybody. Don Pollock here with the history of my world, where we look back at some of the uh, fun stories and memorable moments I've shared with you on the evening news. Today, we're going to look back at a story I did about things that are illegal. Something my wife says this t-shirt should be, but uh, hey, it was there. I just threw it on and, well, maybe she's right. I guess I should get into something a little more you know, dignified. Yeah, okay, that's a lot better. Anyway, as I said, we were doing a story on, on things that were illegal. And I'm not talking about the obvious stuff like, like arson and, and wire fraud and things like that. I'm talking about the hundreds and hundreds of, of statutes that are on the books in municipalities and, and in counties and states all over the country that are ridiculous, that are, that are really weird and, and, and bizarre. And considering, considering the legislative process in this country takes forever to, to modify the tax code or, or to uh, you know, enact uh, you know, health care reforms, and yet somebody found the time to uh, make it illegal to uh, you know, eat licorice on a Sunday or, or, you know, or walk into a department store dressed as a penguin. You know, the, these, kinds of, these kinds of ordinances that are enacted everywhere. And anyway, it turned into a three-part series. There were so many stupid laws that we couldn't cram them all into one piece. So we did a three-part series. Here's part one. Now those were the good old days. No need for lawyers or legal analysts. There were only 10 laws. Basic, straightforward stuff. Don't kill, don't steal, don't fool around with the lady next door. Simple, unambiguous, etched in stone, and incidentally passed with a flair and pageantry that's been unmatched since. However, what today's legislators lack in pizzazz when it comes to enacting laws, they more than make up for in volume. Rules, regulations, statutes, ordinances, governing everything from what we wear to what we don't tear off our mattress, that even for the smallest states in the country are present in a number that's almost unimaginable. Too many to count, that's for sure. It's uh, 31, title, 31 titles to the code, and 20 volume set. And of course, our code is small in comparison to some of the larger states. Consequently, there are laws on the books that cover just about everything. For example, how many times has this happened to you? You're ready for a quick lunch, but you can't find a can opener. So you settle for the next best thing. And simply pull out the loaded 38 caliber revolver that you keep in your kitchen drawer and use it Make my day. to shoot the can open. However, what you probably didn't even realize is that what you're doing is illegal. In Wildwood, New Jersey anyway, which has an ordinance specifically prohibiting the opening of canned goods by shooting at them with a revolver. The type of bizarre law that is not all that uncommon on any level. Certainly it's common. You could go into any law library and just page through either the uh, statutes of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or the ordinances of the city of Philadelphia and you'll find uh, much more than a handful. Laws like the one here in Pennsylvania that says you cannot go fishing if you happen to be sitting on a horse at the time. As a matter of fact, legally, you can't even take a horse with you on a fishing trip. A statute that's not likely to be enforced, but nonetheless is, is still on the books as a, as a holdover from, from a previous time. <laughs> Excuse me, we're, we're not really fishing here. We're just doing this as an example. Well, it might have been a problem in the past. Generally, a, a statute or an ordinance is passed because uh, someone perceives a problem that has to be solved goes to their legislator and eventually a, a statute or an ordinance is passed. Although it's hard to imagine what exactly led to the Pennsylvania law that prohibits loud talking at picnics, the law that prohibits depositing candies on a lawn, and the law that during the performance of a wedding makes it specifically illegal to fire a cannon during the ceremony. I don't know if firing cannons in church was a problem at the time that uh, act was passed. Undoubtedly, it was, at least to somebody. And because laws remain in effect essentially forever until they are specifically repealed, the resulting sheer volume of statutes make for a good hiding place for those that don't really belong there anymore. Most of our obsolete laws are there largely because no one knows that they're there. Which is why activities like loud talking at picnics or fishing from a horse are technically still grounds for landing you in legal hot water. <laughs> All right, next time I'll check the law, okay? I'm sorry, I'm gonna break you. <laughs> but there's another reason that unusual laws occasionally still end up being passed even today. A reason that may surprise you, that we'll tell you about tomorrow in part two of this special report on implausible laws. I'm Don Pollock, Channel 6 Action News. By the way, that shot of uh, me and the horse in a jail cell was, was something I never thought we'd be able to pull off. I mean, I had, you know, I had the idea to do that, but, 
but I mean, how do, you, how do you get, first of all, you have to bring a horse with you to a police station and, you know, the holding cells in a police station are not that big. You're not going to be able to get, or at least that's what I've heard is I wouldn't know myself. But anyway, you're not going to be able to get a horse in there. I, I, it was just, the shot was just a fantasy of mine. But uh, we, we decided, well, maybe, maybe if we went to a racetrack, uh, there would be something that looked like a, a jail. So we went to Garden State Park the late great horse racing track in Cherry Hill. And uh, we asked, you know, do you have anything that looks like a, a jail cell, you know, bars of some kind dividing the stalls, maybe? I, you know, it was a shot in the dark. The guy said, why, what the heck, we can make one for you. I agree, build it. Well, I wasn't here to commission a contracting project. I mean, it, but I, I said, we, we need to get this done fairly quickly, you know? And he goes, ah, yeah, no, no, no problem, no problem. Why don't you go out, have lunch, come back in an hour and a half, and we'll have it for you. Really? Great. So we came back in an hour and a half, and there it was. About an eight-foot wide jail wall, bars and everything. You know, they, it, it, was, it was made out of wood, obviously, wooden dowels, painted black, two-by-fours painted black. And they had it set in front of the washing stall, the washing stall where, you know, they hose down the horses after their workout. Uh, it, it was a white room with three open, uh, with three walls and an open front, and that's where they had the jail cell. And it looked, I mean, when you looked at it in the camera, it looked exactly like what you'd expect a holding cell to look like. So we brought the horse in. The horse was calm because the, the horse was familiar with this, uh, with this place that it goes into every day. To me, it was a perfect example of how many viewers would take hours out of their work day, and instead of doing what they're supposed to be doing, helping us goof around and, and put together a fun story to watch, which in fact was kind of ironic that that shot, which I thought would be impossible, turned out relatively painless. Whereas in part three of this story, a shot that I thought would take two minutes took five days. Because in part three, I wanted to, I wanted to show some wanted posters. You know, those things that, that used to be in post offices. I don't, I don't think they have wanted posters anymore. Yeah, because we had the internet, you know what I'm saying? But it's a tradition that, that goes back to the Wild West. You know, the sheriff would, would you know, nail uh, uh, the poster on his, on his door. You know, wanted, dead or alive, Jesse James. Then there'd be a picture of him and everything like that. Well, that was a tradition that continued all the way up to the latter part of... Uh, uh, of the 20th century. Uh, the FBI's 10 most wanted would be on wanted posters in the post office. Now you can't walk into a post office, you know, with a television camera without permission. I mean, it, you know, it's a quasi-governmental agency. So, so I had to call up and I kept getting bumped to higher and higher levels till I was talking to somebody in Washington, D.C., explaining to them, we just want to get some shots of, of wanted posters. And she goes, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Well, great. Three days later, I finally get a call and she said, OK, you have permission to shoot only the wanted posters. That's it. Nothing else. And you can only do it if you blur out their faces. I said, are you kidding? See, that's the good thing about glasses. You know, when somebody says something really stupid, you can go, really? You know, anyway, I said, why would you not want their faces? on TV. I mean, that's why you've got the wanted posters up in a very public place. So people will see them. Maybe someone will recognize them. Hey, that's the guy that he lives two doors down from me. You know, he borrowed my hedge clippers and didn't give them back. I mean, I'm going to call the FBI. You know, that's what you want. I mean, these are murderers and, and, and kidnappers and, you know, the lowest of the low, the FBI's 10 most wanted. And you're worried about violating their privacy. Oh my goodness, that's, oh, come on, you know, well, I explained that to her, and uh, she eventually got back to me two days later and said, oh, okay, okay, it all worked out, and you can see that in part three of uh, this report, which you can see on my YouTube channel, Don Pollock's World TV. You'll also see part two of Implausible Laws, which is what we named the series, and in part two, you'll be able to see which one of these three diners in New Jersey are breaking the law. Anyway, check that out on Don Pollock's World TV and hit subscribe, hit share, tell your friends, tell everybody. It's a lot of fun and I will continue to dig into our archives for more stories from the history of my world. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time.